Welcome to the show, All Things Writing. I am your host, Brian the Writer. Let me take you on a journey through my writing life and introduce you to some of the amazing talent that exists in the writing world. Whether you're looking for a little advice or just to catch an interesting interview, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All Things Writing starts now. Welcome to All Things Writing. I'm your host, Brian the Writer. Um, I want to start out today with a quote. Uh, forgive me if I get it not completely right. Um, I think it was Voltaire that said, Great is the enemy of... Great is the enemy of good, or best is the enemy of good, or something something along those lines, which is what I want to talk about a little bit today. Not the idea, um, necessarily, but uh, there's a really weird uh, question that I get sometimes when I go to cons. It's this idea of where do you stop uh, tinkering away at a, at a piece? How do you know it's good enough? It's not an easy question to answer, and quite frankly, uh, friends, it's why you see a lot of people who want to be writers have uh, either a manuscript sitting out there in, on their desk for a million years, and they don't do anything with it, uh, or they say, well, I've been working on a book for five years now, eight years now, ten years now. Why? Why? Um, you can't do that to yourself. <clears throat> you really shouldn't. Um now I'm going to I'm going to put on two hats. The first one is that of an indie writer. There are people out there that that admittedly they they churn out a book a month. Uh, I my issue with that is uh, there's not enough time to get editing done, and they don't do a lot of really careful edits. For every day you write, and I think you've all heard me say this before, of every day that you write you have to edit for like three days. Um, that may seem a bit egregious, but that's like including the time with your professional editor and that kind of thing. Uh, it's really important uh, to focus on that, that level of detail, especially if you're going to be an indie, at least for me. That does not guarantee perfection at all by any stretch of the imagination. Even, even, the, even the greats uh, have books that get out there and there's like an error somewhere in there, like maybe a mistyped word or something. How does it make it through all these rounds of editing and still have an error in it? Well, uh, that's because there's a lot of words. Uh, in between the first letter you type and the end, you know, there's 70, 80, 100,000 words. Um, there's a lot of things that go on there. Uh, even today, when I read one of my books in front of a group of people, I got to tell you, there's things I come across and uh, I really wish I would have done that a little differently. That's not to say I am going to harsh on someone else's groove. I, I read a book uh, recently. Um, it's an anthology. And the writer sometimes will use the same word three times and like within the same, within two paragraphs. And... That's kind of a no-no, uh, honestly. You're supposed to, to, to weed that out. But, but by that same token, I'm not going to, to call them out on it either because writing a book's a lot of work. Um, it takes a lot of time. It, it's, it wasn't distracting enough that I put the book down as a matter of fact, I'm finishing it now. Um, and, uh, and, and it's, you know, there, there's some other really great pieces in there. I suppose in the grand scheme of things, uh, I, I could be hypercritical of other people's work, works, but I'm not. Um, that's why, incidentally, when people uh, people get all all irritated, oh, well, this book sucked. It had a uh, it had an issue on you know like the third paragraph of the fourth chapter. Uh, they referred to this guy as having brown hair where uh, in the eighth chapter they said it was dusty blonde. How dare they burn them at the stake? Uh, come on, people. Really? Well, let's, let's, be a, let's calm down for a second. First of all, if you've never actually written a book, uh, uh, I'm not going to say shut your pie hole, but to be quite honest, 
I, I get real close sometimes because writing a book is not easy. There's a lot of work involved. If you've ever successfully written a manuscript of any length, congratulations. You've done something that only a very, very small percentage of people in the world have ever done. Um, if you've done it repeatedly, I have even more respect for you. Also, uh, your first book, uh, my first book, No Name, uh, I don't even sell anymore. The reason I don't sell it anymore is because while it's a great story, I stand by the storyline, uh, the book itself is not terribly well written. It needs to be restructured. It needs to be, but I've learned a lot since then. When I first started writing, I, I didn't quite know what I was doing, but that's where everybody starts. Congratulations. There's nobody that walks out of the gate and like has it all figured out. No, it's a, it's a lot of work. So that brings me back to my original point. What is the point where you're working with a manuscript and you you shrug your shoulders and you say, this is good enough. This is this reached the point where I'm happy with it. Hard to do. Um, it's hard to do because we are our own worst critics. Uh, like I said earlier when I'm, when I'm reading one of my own stories for an audience, a lot of times I'll hit things in there and I'll be like, this is, this is not quite what I meant uh, when I wrote that. Now, do I run back and change it? No. Uh, no, I don't. Because sometimes that juice isn't really worth the squeeze. Besides, I want to move on and do other things. One of my basic tenets of writing, as a writer, as, a, as an author, I need to write stories uh, for myself because if I am not going if, if, if I am not writing stories that I would enjoy reading then nobody else is going to either um, I am at my very core an entertainer I am somebody who loves to be and and you know I know how this sounds I know how this sounds I love being the center of attention I do I enjoy it I like telling good jokes I like, uh, I like entertaining people. I like telling stories. It's part of my fabric that makes me who I am. Part of the reason I, you know, I, I do these videos is because I, I know I like to put them out there. Do I, do I have a ton of, pe ton of people watching these videos? No, but that's okay. I'm not too worried about it. Um, to me, I just enjoy doing them and putting them out there for the world. And I know some of you are enjoying the videos because you do watch them. Uh, do I do scripts for these? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, and the reason I don't do them necessarily all the time is, again, good is the enemy of best. I would rather do this off the cuff and be uh, very casual about the way I do them. Okay, so I started out, sorry, I was, I was on a, got distracted there for a minute. Uh, on the indie thing, I have a certain editorial process that, or editor process that I follow, and it helps get me to the point where I can say, I can say to myself, this is good enough. I'm happy with this. And yes, it, in it includes professional editing. I hire a professional editor, pay money out of my pocket to make sure that gets done. Because to me, it's so important uh, to give it that last look. Now, working with a publisher is a very different story. <clears throat> I like working with publishers. Uh, the only issue I've always had with, with the publishing industry as a whole is uh, when you start to, to put together a book and you present it to a publisher, it's going to fit in their schedule where it fits. You don't get a say once they've accepted it uh, on the publication date. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll get a little bit of wiggle room, but not much. Uh, you don't get a say on what the cover looks like. You probably don't even get a say really on what the final title is going to be. Uh, but they have their own mark of what good enough is going to look like. They have a mark that they want to hit. Uh, what is an acceptable final printing uh, you know, error rate if there isn't any error within the manuscript you know, are they going to completely change the run because of one letter that's goofed up? Probably not. No, um, they might. Some some editors or some some publishers are going to be very picky about it. Uh, for example, I had a book came back to me recently that uh, that a publisher is looking at. Uh, I can't give a lot of details about that uh, about it, but they said um, 
they wanted me to change some things before they would look at it again, which is fine. Totally get it. Um, things they talk about is uh, the use of passive verbs. Uh, for example, my I, I'm in love with the word was. I love the word was. I love it. I love it. I love it. I use it all the time, and I shouldn't. I know that. Um, uh, for example, my my uh, my editor on the indie side highly recommends that every time I write something, I turn around and I say, I look for the term, it was. I love it was. It was is dangerous. It was is lazy writing. It just is. Um, you take it was and you look for what the it was phrase was actually referring to. Grab that. Change a little bit so you're not, you know, just duplicating the words exactly. And, and make it fit, take the place that it was. And what I find is a lot of times it actually ends up adding to the word count a little bit, which is fine. I don't have any problem with that, but it's a thing that you can do. Uh, so, I mean, the, those verbs are like is, are, was, were, be, being, been. Um, I would throw a uh, had in there as well, uh, or, or being a dangerous word. Um, I, I try to minimize those wherever I possibly can. Um, but they have their own uh, they have their own threshold that they want to meet. Now, if you want to work with a publisher and you want to get the publisher to put their stamp of approval on your manuscript, you're going to meet those demands uh, no matter what they are. I see a lot of people very discouraged. Uh, by the, you know, when you're talking with a publisher and they say, oh, well, you know, it could be uh, six years, uh, or not six years, that's a little long, but uh, it could be, you know, three years before your book gets published uh, after you've written it. And, and that's true, but you're also fitting into the publisher schedule. So you have to kind of do what they, they, they are dictating you do, if that's the route you want to go. Um, that's not to say you can't be a hybrid author either, unless there's something contractually that stops you from doing it. You can certainly write other books on the side as you're going along and, and, and do some indie work uh, as well as uh, publishing through a publisher. That's what I intend to do anyway. I'm going to keep doing indie stuff as I go along uh, to sort of to sort of meet meet my own personal uh, mark for what how many books I want to I want to write. Now. Uh, this is all to say that you need to, you writers need to strongly consider what is going to be your benchmark. Where are you going to stop and say, okay, that's good enough? I would recommend a process rather than a, a sort of a, a weird quantifiable goal. Uh, for example, when you are writing and you're going through the editing process, have some steps as an indie. So here are my steps. I'm going to put them up on the screen. Um, uh, step number one, um, do a search for your watchwords. Um, was, was is my personal one because that's literally my biggest one. Um, it was the phrase it was. Uh, go through and Read your manuscript for readability. Uh, look for things that you miss that are obvious, like maybe a sentence that you started and then you sort of trailed off and forgot what you were doing. Um, have another person look at it, a beta reader, a first reader, uh, however you choose to do it. Um, have someone else read it and give you feedback. Um, read aloud. Uh, either have the book read back to you in some way, shape, or form, or... Uh, like I use the, the uh, it's called a read, al read aloud is the, the actual, um, is the actual uh, um, software package comes on Microsoft. Uh, but you can use that read aloud, capture things that you otherwise would have missed. Um, that is, uh, th that's common that, uh, that you will, as you, as you get things read back to you, you will, you'll catch errors because what happens is, uh, like I, I have a tendency to write, I'll write like, it, it, yeah, you know, the two words together, and I'll completely miss that, but read aloud will we'll do it. Okay, so uh, that's that portion, getting it read back to you. Uh, but finally, the thing that I think is really important is get a copy of it and sit down and read it. Now, this is after you've had a little bit of time to sit there and, and kind of forget what's in, in, the, in the book itself. Um, 
I order, uh, I took my glasses off, I need to put them back on. Uh, I order the uh, author copies, author proof copies, so that I can sit there and actually like read through it. Um, and I and I do. I, I keep um, I'll keep notes as I flip through it. Like for example, uh, here's a note to myself. Um, for whatever reason, that one line was like center justified, and I have no idea why. I can't can't even really explain it. Um, another thing here is like there was formatting issues. So you can see where it says thump uh, over here. Um, also, so the, here's a sentence, um, that, that I got wrong. It said, Haley stretched her foot forward and the cold water of the Atlantic overtook her foot. First of all, that's foot, foot, but anyway. Um, but Haley was in Texas. The Atlantic is not in Texas. That's the Gulf of Mexico. So, uh, I had to, to fix that. Uh, so you, you find things like it. I mean, you can do that, this on uh, Kindle, by the way, you don't have to order a copy. I just like having the physical copy of the book to actually go through and make notes on. Um, you could like save it off in PDF format. I think it's PDF format and send it to yourself on Kindle and sit down and read it. So anyway, that's my next, uh, thing I'm going to tell you that, that you want to do is have, uh, have a good read through. Now, at that point, ladies and gentlemen, let it go. If you are satisfied with what you are seeing, if it's the story that you meant to write and the story that you would like to read, breathe life into it. Let it be, let it exist. Because that's why you started the process anyway, right? That's what you wanted to do. You wanted to share your story in your way. Do it. Get it out there. Now, don't worry about, like I said, don't worry about whether it's a great book. Your first novel is never going to be. Um, that's just, that's the, the, the game. That's what we do, right? Uh, that's why a lot of writers, uh, their first book you never see again, like my book, No Name, is not is not actually available to buy. Uh, I am going to go back and, and redo that story one of these days because it's a great story. Uh, it's a fun story. Uh, sort of like the 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 ultimate horror race uh, against time and a, uh, a resurrected serial killer. Anyway, uh, okay, so that's about all I've got to say on the topic of good is the enemy of best. You have to decide what that looks like. Um, and don't let best stop you. Don't let best get in your way. Uh, I'm, I'm encouraging you to get messy, make mistakes. It's the only way you're going to learn. It's the only way you're going to get better. So anyway, uh, that's it for today. That's it for all things writing. Thank you very much for joining me. As always, I really appreciate it, uh, the chance to, to talk and, and share my views and blah, blah, blah. So I uh, hope you're having a wonderful summer and enjoying the weather. Um, if you're looking for places to come out and see me uh, on the 17th and 18th, I think it's 17th and 18th, of August, I will be at the Dulles uh, Expo Center. Come see me. Um, that's going to be great fun. We're going to be there for Fairfax Comic Con. Uh, I'm also going to be at the Fredericksburg Independent Book Festival this year. Uh, myself and my, my buddy Brian Grover, we've got a table. Um, he's going to be at uh, Fairfax, Com Fairfax Comic Con too. So come out and see us. Uh, love repeat visitors. Love repeat guests. Uh, I love repeat readers. Um, they're the reason I do what I do. So, all right. Thank you so much. Uh, you all have a wonderful day. Um, and, uh, we'll talk to you later. Ta-ta for now. This is Brian, the writer signing off. This has been another amazing episode of all things writing. If you heard something that got your wheels spinning, check out the links in the show notes. Also, please follow the show and remember to leave those reviews. Those simple acts of kindness mean the world to us. Hop on over to briannowak.com, and that is Brian with a Y, and check out my latest novels. I'm on Amazon or wherever you buy your ebooks. And as a reminder, the music you heard on the show today was used under license from the artist Ryan Ancona. Thanks for listening to the show and have a blessed day.